Hi ladies, I'm so excited to be doing my first video for the Five Waiting Wombs channel. Um, you've got to excuse my voice, I have laryngitis and um, that's why I sound like a frog. Um, so I want to address um, some of the questions that Mindy sent in. Thank you Mindy. Um, I got to say that I do concur completely with Elizabeth and uh, Carla. Carla nailed everything. I mean, all the fertility signs and um, signs of ovulation, I mean, to a T. She's very dead on with those. So, um, I'm definitely going to refer to her bas basically for the technical aspects of um, determining ovulation because she just, she just nailed it. Um, what I did want to uh, add to this is um, for those, um, those of you with PCOS, it can be quite challenging, though, to predict ovulation because um, for the basal body temperatures, um, a lot of times the temperatures will be either a flat line or very rocky just all over the place. There's no, um, there's no set pattern um, because PCOS is, you know, is a uh, hormonal issue and hormones are what really drives our cycles and it drives the temperature changes and it drives the change in cervical mucus and changes our cervical position and um, when those hormones aren't working in conjunction with each other and the cycles are very unpredictable then your ovulation signs are going to be unpredictable and um, as I said with the temperatures a lot of times they can be flatlined or, or very rocky due to those hormonal issues with PCOS. But it doesn't mean that you know you will not see a rise. If you do, if and when you ovulate, um, you should see uh, that rise and plateau. Um, and so it just may take a while to get there or it may not look like everyone else's chart um, that you might look at that doesn't have PCOS. Um, also, with the um, cervical mucus, what I've experienced in red is that um, sometimes with PCOS you can have patches of egg white cervical mucus along the cycle, especially if you have infrequent cycles. Um, you can, you know, get, um, it's just the hormonal fluctuations and you can have patches of egg white cervical mucus when you're at times when you're not ovulating. But with us ladies, we have to uh, treat each egg white patch that we have as a fertile window, which it makes it interesting. Um, but when we have those, you don't know which, which one's going to be the time before ovulation, so you have to treat each one as uh, the fertile window when it comes up. Um, and one of those times will probably be ovulation, but um, it's difficult to go through, you know, is this it, is this it, is this it. Just treat each, when you have egg white cervical mucus, just treat it as, you know, that's your fertile window, even if you have to do it over and over and over, literally. Um, let's see. Um, with the timing of sex, uh, that, you know, Car like I said, Carla nailed it, and um, she had nailed it, basically. So, um... But uh, the question of male factor is very interesting because my husband actually has, um, we're, we also suffer with uh, male factor, uh, low count and motility. And um, it's important that when you're timing sex, when you're dealing with male factor, that you don't um, have sex every day because the count will be lower and lower. Um, for each consecutive day. Um, the men really need a day in between to concentrate the sperm again as best they can um, to give you the best um, chance of getting pregnant. So um, that is definitely something that I would recommend is not um, to have sex every day during your fertile window, but every other day. Trying to time, you know, one of the sexual escapades for the day of ovulation um, and that is probably the best advice for the male factor other than 
the doctors, you know, if you go to a reproductive endocrinologist, if the sperm count is very low, they will often recommend um, just going with intrauterine insemination. So um, I hope this answers adds to the discussion, and um, I'm, I'm just excited to be on the channel, and I thank you all for watching. Thank you.